So February, that was sort of a iffy month when it came to sneaker releases. There were some good releases, don't get me wrong, but we couldn't get any of them. It's true for them, so hunt me at night. But it looks like the sneaker brands are making up for the mess that was February with one of the most incredible marches I've ever seen. And I'm serious when I say that March is just off the charts. You've got crazy Jordan releases, you've got crazy Nike releases, you've got New Balances, you've got Yeezys, you've got Adidas's. It's an insane, insane month. What's up everybody? I'm Seth Fowler and this is Sit or Sell. First of all, thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. I'm so happy you guys are here, and if you have not yet, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below. Also, make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter, at RealSethValor, because that's my social media, and if you care about my life outside of YouTube, make sure to check those out. To be fair, though, it is still a lot of sneakers over there, so if you care, great. If you don't, that's no problem. But as with every other sit or sell that I do, the way these videos work is I take a look at the first half or the second half of any given month. In this case, we're taking a look at the first half of March 2021. I let you guys know about all of the notable sneaker releases in the first half of the month that we know about at the time of filming because randomly brands surprise drop things. You never know when that's gonna happen. And of course, I let you all know whether I think each one of these shoes are gonna sit on shelves or sell out. So with all of that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. <sighs> so starting off this incredible month on March 3rd, we've got the Jordan Delta in Terra Blush. This release is apparently the Breathe variant of the Jordan Delta, which is, I guess, a slightly more breathable version of the shoe. The shoe apparently features very lightweight materials on the upper as well as a full-length React midsole. And for this particular release, the Jordan Delta Breathe comes in a Terra Blush colorway, which is essentially just tonal pink. Now when I say pink, I don't really mean hot pink, I mean like terracotta pink, like light sort of brick colored pinks. And even though the shoe isn't a shoe which I feel like I need to buy, it is still a pretty solid colorway and I gotta give the Jordan designer some props because it looks pretty great. However, I don't think the Jordan Delta silhouette has really taken off and because of that, I kinda think the shoe is gonna sit. Then continuing on to March 4th, we've got the Air Jordan 4 Golf in the white cement colorway. I'm sure a lot of you guys are feeling exactly how I'm feeling about this release. Why aren't we getting a standard white cement Air Jordan 4? Why are we getting a golf version? No one cares about this version. Okay, I mean, I guess some people do, but most people would prefer a standard Air Jordan 4 white cement. Why haven't we gotten that shoe since 2016? I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this shoe looks great. It just has golf cleats on the bottom of it. I don't know if that's exactly what they're called, but that's what I'm calling them. I wish this shoe came with a normal midsole and outsole. I, I just, I can't stress that enough. It's fine. It's an awesome looking sneaker. If you play a lot of golf, I mean, by all means, grab this shoe. You're gonna look awesome on the links field. What do they call it? You're gonna look awesome if you're wearing this shoe when you're golfing, uh, is what I probably should have said. It's a great shoe. I think a lot of golfers out there are gonna love this silhouette and this colorway. And it's also probably going to be relatively limited. So for that reason, I definitely think the Air Jordan 4 Golf White Cement will sell out. Next up on March 4th, which is turning out to be a very dunk heavy day, we've got the Nike Dunk Low City Market. So this shoe is apparently inspired by Nike's heritage of innovation. Not sure how that translates to what the shoe is actually inspired by, which is rice bags and coffee bean bags, but apparently that's the reason. I mean, it does feature some blue ribbon logos on the outside of the shoe, which is pretty cool because that's what Nike's logo was before they were Nike. I gotta say, I love the eclectic look of the shoe. I love all the different colors used on the upper, and I think the durable, which is what Nike is calling the materials used on the upper, really make the shoe look very unique. Another detail which I didn't notice until I took a closer look at the shoe is the fact that the shoe uses clear plastic Nike swooshes, so you can see the materials underneath. That's honestly a really cool detail, and I think it looks really great on this colorway. I mean, I would guess that this shoe might not be for everybody because of how insane and eclectic this sneaker looks, but it's probably going to be very limited. It's on a Nike Dunk silhouette, and overall, whether you like the story or not, the sneaker is very unique. So because of all those reasons combined, I think that the Nike Dunk Low City Market will definitely sell out. Continuing on with the Nike Dunks dropping on March 4th, we've got the Supreme Nike SB Dunk Low collaboration dropping in four different colorways. Now for those of you that don't know, this pack was inspired by the original Supreme Nike Dunk High collaboration that dropped in the early 2000s. Those sneakers came in a very similar look with the gold stars on the midfoot as well as the faux croc skin on the overlays. However, unlike this release, they came in a high top variant. Not only that, this time around, Nike and Supreme decided to change things up even more by releasing different colorways altogether. And the 
four colorways that are releasing are Hyper Blue, Bark Root Brown, Black, and Mean Green. And you know, out of the four colorways, I'm really leaning towards the blue, or I guess the dark maroon colorway, which I originally thought was brown, but seeing it in these images, it looks a lot more ready than I thought. Now, I'm not sure if this release date is gonna be for Supreme dropping the shoes, or whether this is gonna be the Nike sneakers release of the shoes. I would assume that it's gonna be the Supreme release, because usually how these drops work is they drop first through Supreme, and then like a week or two later, they drop through the sneakers app and through Nike's website. But as of right now, even though we're so close to release, actual release details on these sneakers are still pretty limited. Of course, because these sneakers are a collaboration between Supreme and Nike, they do feature a lot of heavy Supreme branding. You've got Supreme on the insoles, you've got the Supreme gold accent on the bottom of the laces, as well as the Supreme world famous tag. I've never been like a huge Supreme fan, but I do like select Supreme pieces, and this is one of those pieces or collections that I would just love to own a piece of. Of course, being a Supreme collaboration, especially with Nike, this collection will be very difficult to get, and it's definitely gonna sell out. Then moving on to March 5th, we've got the Casablanca New Balance 237. Casablanca has been one of New Balance's most prolific collaborators, and so far everything that they've dropped has been fire. This Casablanca NB237 comes in a white upper with green accents on the outsole and also on the tongue of the shoe, as well as a very interesting print on both the mudguard and the heel foxing. It's a really solid looking sneaker, and I think as has been the case with Casablanca New Balance collabs, I think the 237 will definitely sell out. If you wanted to grab the 237 and you missed out, you also have another chance to grab another sneaker from the collection with the Casablanca New Balance 327. Now the 327 is a very similar looking sneaker to the 237, especially in this colorway. I mean, the color blocking on this shoe looks almost identical to the 237. However, I think I prefer the 327 silhouette over the 237 silhouette overall. But regardless of which silhouette you like more, it's still a Casablanca New Balance collaboration, and I think for that reason, the 327 will also sell out. And then rounding off March 5th, we've got the Nike Dunk High Dark Russet. So apparently this colorway has already released almost everywhere else in the world except the United States. So if you're watching this from another country, I mean, how's the shoe? Is it good? Seems awesome. The Nike Dunk High Dark Russet comes in a black upper accented by sort of caramel colored overlays and a maroon colored Nike swoosh. And as far as Nike Dunk releases go, it probably will be the least popular out of all the Dunks releasing that week, but it's still a super clean colorway. And of course, being a Nike Dunk, no matter what it looks like, it will definitely sell out. Then moving on to March 6th, we've got one of the most anticipated Jordan 1 releases of the entire year, and that's the Air Jordan 1 University Blue. So I've actually already done a full review on this sneaker, so if you guys would like to check it out, there will be a link at the top of the screen, but I've gotta say, hype is real, man. This shoe is really, really hyped up, and it's honestly worth the hype. It's an incredible sneaker. The Air Jordan 1 University Blue comes in a very UNC style colorway and features a white tumbled leather upper with blue suede overlays. Of course, you've also got black accents on the Nike swoosh and around the top of the ankle collar, but overall, it's a pretty clean and simple Air Jordan 1 that comes in a very Chicago-esque color block. It's always the simplest Air Jordan 1s that get the most love, the ones that look like OGs and the ones that are just insanely wearable. And this is one of those shoes, and no matter how many pairs they release, which I don't think is gonna be a huge amount, this shoe will definitely sell out. Also releasing on the 6th, we've got another insanely hyped sneaker that's been anticipated for years at this point, and that's the Adidas Yeezy 450. So as I'm recording this at the end of February, there's kind of been disputed release dates for this sneaker. I've heard some people say March 4th, and I've heard other people say March 6th, but because it's a brand new Yeezy silhouette, I wouldn't be surprised if it released on the 6th, because that's a Saturday, and that's a day when most people are on their computers trying to buy sneakers. But regardless of when this sneaker actually ends up releasing, whether it's the 4th or the 6th, it's one of the most anticipated Yeezys of the last couple years because we've been seeing leaks of this shoe since like 2018. The Yeezy 450, originally named the Yeezy 451, is a brand new Yeezy silhouette that comes with knit upper and a foam midsole and outsole. But what makes this shoe so unique and so interesting is that the foam midsole and outsole actually wraps up onto the upper of the shoe like fingers and kind of acts as a midfoot cage. As you can see, the first colorway to release is the cloud white colorway, which we've actually seen Kanye wearing. And although it's not the most exciting colorway in the world, World. The shoe itself is so exciting. I don't care what colorway it is. It could release in like a brown mixed with purple and green. That actually doesn't sound too bad. I was trying to make it sound really awful. It could release in the worst colorway ever and I would still buy it. But unfortunately, from what I've heard, this shoe will be insanely limited and only released through yeezysupply.com. So the chances of actually being able to buy this shoe on its first release are very, very slim. And of course, that means that the Yeezy 450 in the cloud white colorway will definitely sell. 
Then moving on to March 8th, we've got the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro All-Star. So this is the second Kobe 6 Pro Tro colorway to release after the Grinch colorway, and it comes in a really clean red look. What I love most about this colorway is how at the edges of the upper, it kind of fades from a black into a red, and in the center of the shoe, you've got this beautiful bright shade of red. And even though the Kobe 6 might not be the most wearable lifestyle sneaker because of its snakeskin styled upper and the fact that it's a basketball performance sneaker, this colorway is just so clean and so easy to throw on with pretty much anything. Now with Kobe passing just about a year ago, the wound is still fresh and people are still really feeling it. And unfortunately that means that this shoe will probably be very difficult to get and it will definitely sell out. But then, continuing on to March 9th, we've got the Nike Blazer Mid Popcorn. So apparently Nike decided to make a whole collection inspired by popcorn. I don't know why, but they did. So because of that, this Nike Blazer Mid comes in a white upper accented by cream details on the midsole and on the Nike swoosh. And another detail which I thought was pretty cool was that the insole of the sneaker actually comes with a popcorn print. It's unfortunate that that's only on the insole and you can't see that anywhere else in the shoe because honestly, for me, that's the most exciting part of the sneaker. But at the end of the day, it does just kind of look like a white Nike Blazer Mid. And so it's not that exciting for a lot of people. And because of that, I don't think there's a lot of hype. And for that reason, I think the shoe might sit. Then also releasing in the popcorn collection, we've got the Nike AF1 Low Popcorn. Again, it is a popcorn themed AF1 Low. It comes in sort of a cream white upper accented by white details this time. So I guess from the blazer mid, the colors have kind of switched. Nothing crazy. It's a popcorn themed AF1 Low. It looks a lot like a standard pair of AF1 Lows. And because of that, no matter how cool the inspiration is or how much you love popcorn, I just don't think the hype is there. So for that reason, I think the shoe is going to sit. Honestly though, I've been wrong about stuff like this in the past. Some people just love limited collections, and so it's possible that both of these shoes could sell, but personally, I think they're gonna sit. Also releasing on March 9th, we've got the Nike Dunk High All-Star. Now this shoe reminds me a lot of the Tiffany Dunks and the Tiffany Dunk Highs because the color blocking is very, very similar. Officially, this shoe is called the Nike Dunk High Barely Green, and so the green isn't as saturated as the Tiffany Dunks are, but it's still a very similar shade of green. Unlike the Tiffany's, however, the overlays on this shoe come in glossy black patent leather which I think looks all right. And because this shoe is an all-star inspired sneaker, it features an all-star patch on the heel. Now, obviously with everything going on in the world right now, all-star weekend is not gonna look anything like it usually does. And because of that, I don't know if the hype will be as high as it usually is, but because this shoe is a Nike Dunk and because it comes in a pretty nice colorway overall, I definitely think the Nike Dunk High All-Stars will sell out. Nike is just slamming us with dunk colorways. And I'm not complaining, but man, there are a lot of dunks. This is probably how the dunks got worn out in the first place. But the first dunk that we're getting on the 10th is the Nike Dunk High Syracuse. Now this colorway is originally from the original Nike Dunk High Collegiate Pack. Obviously, as the name would suggest, this shoe was inspired by Syracuse, and that's why it comes in a white and bright orange colorway. I actually have the Syracuse Dunk Lows, and it's one of those shoes that I didn't expect to wear that much because I don't usually wear a lot of orange, but man, I wear that shoe like almost every other day. It's nuts. So I might actually have to pick up this pair because my Syracuse Dunk Lows might not last that much longer. Even though Nike Dunk Highs traditionally aren't as popular as Nike Dunk Lows, I think this colorway is definitely a very popular colorway. And of course, Nike Dunks are Nike Dunks and they sell no matter what they look like. So because of that, the Nike Dunk High Syracuses will definitely sell out. After that, yep, we've got another Nike Dunk. This time around, it's the Nike Dunk Low Black and White. This shoe is probably about as simple as a Nike Dunk can get. It comes in a white upper with black overlays and a black outsole. And in my opinion, simple is better. I'm obsessed with this colorway. I think it's an incredible looking sneaker and it's one of those shoes that you can literally throw on with anything, literally anything. Maybe not anything, but just about everything. Now, from what I've heard, this will be one of the most available Nike Dunk Lows. However, even though there's gonna be a lot of pairs, the hype is still there and it's still gonna be very difficult to get. I literally have not been able to buy a Nike Dunk off the sneakers app since 2000 and probably 14 when I got the, the Tiffany Highs. It's been that long. Actually, you know what? I got the Marty McFly Lows back in like, 2015, is that what it is, 2016? I don't know, regardless, no matter how available this shoe is, I definitely think the Nike Dunk Low Black and White will sell out. Then rounding off the 10th, we've got a brand new Air Jordan 1 colorway with the Air Jordan 1 patina. So at first glance, this shoe kind of looks like a shadow Air Jordan 1 with some 
brown on it. And to be fair, actually, that's pretty much exactly what this shoe is. The brown on the sneaker comes on the Nike swoosh, on the eye stays, and on the mudguard. It really is kind of an interesting look, and it's not color blocking that you see often on the Air Jordan 1. With that said, though, it kind of does look like a worn out bronze Air Jordan 1, and I think that looks really good on this shoe. Now, as of right now, Nike hasn't been too forward about the inspiration behind this shoe, but I'm sure as we get closer to the release, we'll learn more about it. I mean, even if you don't have a pair of shadows and you've wanted a pair of shadows, this is pretty close. But I really do think this shoe stands on its own and I think this colorway although it's different is pretty good looking and it's a shoe that I'm definitely going to be trying to pick up but no surprise here it is an Air Jordan 1 and just like Nike Dunks Air Jordan 1s are insanely popular right now so for that reason this colorway will definitely sell Moving forward onto March 11th, we've got two different colorways, the Nike Undercover Overbreak SP. Now the two colorways that this shoe is coming in are a black colorway and a fossil colorway. Both colorways of the shoe come in essentially one color, whether it's fossil or black, and both the upper of the shoe and the full length react midsole of the shoe come in the same shade. The one detail that kind of separates this shoe from other Nike Overbreaks is the rose embroidery in the middle of the Nike swoosh. It's almost like the Nike swoosh is kind of like holding the rose, like really gently, it's, it's a nice look. I've actually I've actually never tried the Nike Overbreak, and I've been really interested in trying it because of the insane amount of React that they use in the midsole of this shoe. Now even though there's been a good amount of Overbreaks that have released over the last year, it's still a pretty popular silhouette, and it's still been relatively limited. So because of that, I think there's a lot of demand for this shoe, and I think that both of these colorways in this collaboration will sell out. Then moving on to March 12th, we've got the return of an iconic sneaker, the Reebok Answer 4. So the Reebok Answer 4 is one of the most important sneakers for Allen Iverson, and obviously I'm an Allen Iverson fan, and the reason for that is that not only did he play his MVP season in this shoe, but the iconic Tyron Lue step over took place in this shoe which is crazy and I have to have this sneaker. This Reebok Answer 4 returns in its iconic white and red colorway, and while the shoe might not be as popular or as hyped up as a lot of the other sneakers releasing on the same day, it's got so much more history and it's so much more important for sneaker culture. I will absolutely be trying to grab a pair of these for myself on March 12th, and because of the history behind this sneaker, I think this shoe will probably sell out. After that, we've got the Sean Witherspoon Adidas ZX8000 Super Earth. So I actually just unboxed this sneaker last week, and if you guys would like to check out that full unboxing, I'll make sure to leave a link at the top of the screen. But I do have to say that as far as Sean Witherspoon collaborations go, this one might be the most polarizing. It's fair to say that the shoe looks nuts. Like, it's a crazily colored sneaker, it comes with a bunch of strings kind of dangling off the side, it's, it's a weird looking shoe. The concept behind the sneaker though is very, very cool. And the fact that the entire sneaker is made up of recycled materials and animal free materials makes it even more appealing. But I can't get over the fact that the design is nuts and probably won't be able to be worn by everyone. And because of that, I just don't see this shoe appealing to as many people unless it's super limited. So although personally, I don't mind the design of the shoe and I love what the shoe is trying to accomplish, I just don't think a lot of people are gonna run out to the store and try and buy this shoe. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Very interestingly, right after that, on the same exact day, we've got another recycled sneaker, this time from Nike. And that shoe is the Nike Cosmic Unity Space Hippie. So the Nike Cosmic Unity is Nike's first basketball sneaker that focuses on sustainability and using recycled materials. And this colorway in particular is pretty interesting because it looks just like the Space Hippies because it's named after the Space Hippies. This shoe comes in a primarily gray upper and features orange and blue accents throughout. And of course, just like the previous Cosmic Unities and the Space Hippies, this shoe features mainly recycled materials. It's definitely a cool concept and I actually really like the way that this sneaker looks and I've actually bought a pair of these for myself in the original colorway, I'm just still waiting for them to come in. But even though I think these shoes are really cool and I think people are excited about the way that these sneakers look and the fact that they feature recycled materials, the hype just isn't there. And just like with the original colorway of the Cosmic Unities, I do not think this newer colorway will sell out. And then finally rounding off March 12th, we've got the carpet company Nike Dunk High Royal. So the idea behind this sneaker is that it looks like a carpet. Not only that, the shoe also features a tearaway upper that reveals a yellow material underneath the blue overlays. It's actually a really good looking Nike Dunk High. I didn't originally like it, but when I see these professional photos of it, it looks a lot better than it does on leaked images online. Obviously, as the name of the shoe would suggest, the shoe comes with royal blue overlays, a white leather upper, as well as sort of an aged yellow midsole and outsole. It's also probably going to be very limited and very, very difficult to get. So, just like with every other Nike Dunk on this list, I definitely think the Carpet Company Nike Dunk Highs will sell out. 
Moving on to March 13th, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 9 Change the World. So this women's multicolor Air Jordan 9 is apparently inspired by Michael Jordan's changing of the world when he played the game. The shoe features a rather pastel multicolored upper and the main multicolor accents are on the patent leather and seem to be sewn in in different panels. However, even though the shoe does feature multicolor paneling, the main colors on this shoe do seem to be white, black, and then yellow on the midsole. It's definitely not a bad look, but it's one that I don't really feel like I need and it's also a women's exclusive, so even if I wanted it, well, I guess my feet are small enough to rock it, so I could get it if I wanted to, but I don't, so I won't. Regardless, at the end of the day, it is a retro Air Jordan 9, and just like all the other retro Jordans that have been releasing recently, I do think that this shoe will sell out. And then finally, on March 15th, rounding off today's insane video, we've got the Adidas Yeezy 380 in the Covalite colorway. A couple weeks ago, people thought that the Covalite Yeezys were gonna be Yeezy 350 V3s, but unfortunately, turns out they're just 380s. I know, that really bummed me out too. The Covalite 380s come in a brown, black, and purple upper and look a lot like the black 380s that released a couple months back. The inspiration behind both the name and the colorway of the sneaker is a mineral called Covalite, and it looks very similar to this shoe. And I guess if you're someone who wants a pair of 380s and hasn't been able to grab a pair in the past, this might be a good pair to go for. And the good news is, if you're one of those people, you shouldn't actually have too hard of a time trying to grab it because the 380 is apparently like the least popular Yeezy. We've actually seen a couple different 380 colorways sit, which surprised me a lot. And honestly, I think the Kovalite colorway is gonna be like those other colorways, and I think the Kovalite 380s will end up sitting. But that pretty much wraps up Sitter's Cell for the first half of March 2021. Now I would love to know your thoughts on all of the releases dropping in the first half of this month and which shoes you're looking forward to most. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.